Why have I chosen these specific ones? It says in the title. Most vision statements that you come across are for us, whatever that company is, for us to become the best in the field and the leaders in this, and it's all about us. These vision statements are not about us. They're outward looking. A vision statement, in my opinion, should not be inward looking, not as a vision. A vision should be outward looking. What is your ideal picture of the world that you could possibly contribute to achieving? Right, so we've recently changed our vision statement. Uh, it was also one of those, we want to be the best, we want to be inspirational and so on. At the end we thought this is, this is punch here and this is what we'd like the world to be where we think we can make a contribution. Right? People being uh, helped in their lives, no matter what it is, work life, home life, private life, by project management. Some business slogans. Beyond Petroleum is an easy one. BP. I thought BP stood for British Petroleum. Why have they changed it? Adapt. Pardon? They're trying to adapt to things other than petroleum. Exactly. At one stage, the CEO, and I don't know if this was the same CEO who went sailing when, when his people were dying in the Mexican Gulf. Um, the CEO asked his executives a question. What are we going to do when we run out of oil? Are we going to be in business? Are we an oil company? Or are we an energy company? And that's where this whole thing came out of beyond petroleum. So already we're starting to look beyond the oil age. Now the oil age may not end because we run out of oil, by the way. The stone age didn't end because we ran out of stone. Because other and better technology became available, right? So maybe technology that we're not aware of even today. Okay. Yeah, so I like this one, beyond petroleum. Some people, all, is there anybody from BP here? <laughs> Somebody now also call it the burning platform. Right. Uh, disastrous and frankly, I won't comment on it, but I think things could have been done differently, both by them, by the American government and all the other stakeholders in this disaster. But anyway, what's done is done. For life. It has the brand name in front, dot, for life. You know this one? Also Scandinavian? Volvo. Volvo for life. Much more than a car. For life. Think about it. And they normally show a child in a child seat in the car. Right? It's about safety. It's about protecting your family. We know we need transportation. We know we need cars. Let's do it in the safest possible manner. Again, some people change this one. Volvo. Anybody from Volvo here? Problems for life. Now, I had Volvos and that's not my experience. I've loved the cars to bits. Unfortunately, in the country where I was driving them, the service wasn't that great. And for me, service, as you may hear, very important. Connecting people, Nokia. Nice one, connecting people. Not just telecommunication with fancy gadgets. No, we're connecting people. Right? Now, I carry, and I'm proud of this sometimes, I carry a one dirham Nokia as my communication device. Uh, I know Sakat <laughs> really wants to get me onto Blackberries and so on. And I need to learn to tweet and those things. It's not really my primary, uh, my primary interest in life. Um, I bought the phone. Well, we bought the phone as a family. It's a spare phone. My, my main phone died. <coughs> but um, it was 100 dirham and it came with 99 dirham talk time. So, and I like this. And it's, it does the job. Why? It makes a phone call, right? So anyway, with connecting people, that's what's important. Be the first to know, and I've just realized this is actually expired, but this was a slogan of, now they're saying going beyond borders, CNN, yeah? It was be the first to know, now they're going beyond borders. Somehow I have a feeling that this may have to do with a movie with Angelina Jolie and Clive Owen that was called Beyond Borders, it was about a reporter. Maybe, maybe it has to do with that. It was a good movie, by the way, if you've never seen it. Uh, tragic movie, but nice. Be the first to know CNN. So this is all I'm going to say. Sorry, oh, no, no, there's one more. Right, and this we probably do know. Just do it. Nike. Now, where does it refer, where does this refer to, to sports gear and sportswear and sports image? Right, if you're Roger Federer, I mean, you get paid many, many millions for wearing Nike brands and so on. But 
Where does it? Nowhere. And yet everybody knows just do it is the Nike slogan. Now this is great. Okay, I don't know if I've uh, stimulated some thinking, uh, if I've given you some inspiration. This is all I'm going to say about inspiration. What I mean is that as leaders in organizations, we need to have a way to inspire our people, right? Managing people, flooding them with procedures and work orders and work descriptions is one thing of doing things, but you're not going to get organizational excellence, trust me, out of this. You need to inspire your people. You need to have a vision. The leaders need to live the vision, embody the vision. Yeah? Not like, this is what we're going to do, people, but I'm going to do something else. Right? Don't, do as I, don't do as I do, do as I say. That doesn't work. You need to lead by example. Right? And people will follow. And if you have inspired people who buy into a vision, you don't need to manage them. They will do things because they believe in it. Uh, at some stage, I was working at a power station in South Africa called Majuba, coal-fired power station, during the, the construction. Um, I was not employed. I was on a contract. I was a consultant. But we had a power station manager who, whom I admire and whom I see as a great leader. At one stage, we had 4,000 people on the site, and he knew almost everybody on a first-name basis. You would walk past him in the plant early morning. He came back from a production meeting when he was on his way to a production meeting. Good morning, Luke. Good morning, Mr. Stein. Good job on that claim on your contract. How does he know? I don't report to him. But he knew. He made it his business to know what was going on, who did what. And he always made it his business to thank you and to compliment you. Also to criticize if you did something not right. Not criticize, but reprimand in a, in a friendly way. You know the one-minute manager, Ken Blanchard? One-minute manager, three principles of leadership. Good delegation, one-minute praise, one-minute reprimand. When you reprimand your people, don't criticize the people. Don't break them down. Criticize the behavior. Tell them what they did wrong, but tell them you appreciate who they are for your company, what they do. But if they made a mistake, they must fix the mistake. We do not grind people in the ground because they make a mistake. We all make mistakes, believe me. Yeah? All right. I'm going to leave the inspiration part because I'll, I will get carried away and run out of time. In terms of strategy, just a few uh, general messages about organizational strategy. What is strategic management? According to Sam Houston University, formulating, implementing, and evaluating cross-functional decisions to enable the organization to uh, reach objectives. Right, so that's just the academic definition. <clears throat> Importantly, strategy, part of strategy is planned, always needs to be planned, but a large part of strategy these days, and this depends on the ever-changing environment that you are working in, and certain industries do evolve quicker than others, um, a lot of the strategy these days is emergent. It emerges out of happenings, things happen uh, in the world, in the country, in your sector, or whatever the case, that forces you to adjust to modify that strategy. And I believe in today's world we probably need to work more on emergent strategy than on planned strategy. Right? Very long-term strategies have to be very, very, very high level because you simply do not know what the future will bring. We only know that it's going to change ever faster. Right, they also see a hierarchy. They say your corporate strategy is on top and the example of BP is good. So are we in the oil business or are we in the energy business, and of course this will have repercussions down the line as to how we do things, what opportunities we're going to start to pursue, and so on. From there on we can formulate a business strategy. Once we decide that we're in the energy business, now in energy it's easy, you want to be the biggest, right? But in other, in other industries perhaps you do not want to be the biggest. Maybe you want to be a highly specialized niche player, right? Maybe you don't go for the volume market. Other decisions, are we in a consolidation phase or are we in a growth phase? Uh, not so long ago, one of our clients we were training, I asked the people, what are your corporate strategies these days? What is your corporate focus? Oh, we want to we grow, we want to grow really fast, but, but we want to make a profit as well. The first time, we want to break even. Right? This is a fairly young company. And then we looked at each other and said, but that's actually contradictory, isn't it? Right? You want to grow, growing means investing. 
Investing means balance sheets will not look good for the first quarter or two, but in the longer term, yes, hopefully they will yield benefits. Benefits will come later. But we want to show break even now. Is it really compatible? So from the start, if you have that sort of thing in your organizational strategy, how, how successful will you be? All right. Then, of course, the departmental or the functional strategy needs to be uh, designed in order to meet those business strategies.